I'm going to show you how to clean a carburetor. Number one, disconnect all the ancillary. Do not grab the fuel pipe here or you'll tear it. Grab it a bit further down. Next, remove the carburetor. Keep it upright because the float bowl contains a lot of telltale information about what could be wrong with it. Remove the float bowl screws, being careful not to round them off. Once you get the last screw out, be very careful not to lose the, the fuel in the float bowl. And just open it as so. We've got inside here, we really need to be able to see. So, clean container. As you can see in there, quite a few little bits of contaminant in that fuel. We're going to clean the carburetor now, and we're going to do that mechanically. To do that, we need to take out all the jets. This is the main jet. Again, make sure you've got a very good fitting screwdriver. Underneath the main jet is the emulsion tube, and that helps you pop. Next is the idle circuit. That's next to the main jet circuit. And the first jet is just down there. Again, a good fitting screwdriver is imperative. Otherwise, you'll damage the very delicate jet. So we've got jet, jet, small little orifices, or orify, probably not orify, but it sounds funny, doesn't it? Uh, and then this one here is your idle mixture screw, or it's the business end of it. And we need to take that out. But before we take it out, we need to check how many turns in it's set at at the moment. Half, one, half, two, half. That's two and a half turns, or just under, which is quite a lot. And that is usually the case if somebody's been messing around with a carburetor because it's not running right. Idle mixture screw out. And let's whip off the float and needle valve. Be very careful when you're doing this, because when you lift the float out, doo -doo -doo -doo, the needle valve is below, and on some carbs, it falls off, or on other carbs, it stays in. And I have done this when I was about 16, probably a little bit younger than you boys that are learning here now. Uh, it stays in, and then when you're blowing through with compressed air like we're going to in a bit, the needle valve just goes and disappears across the workshop. And manually clean out with a small drill. Into the orifice of the jet. We aren't going to use a mandrel to hold this jet drill with, because if you do, then you can impart a little bit too much onto the jet and you can actually start taking material off the jet itself, which is not what we're trying to do. All we're trying to do is, is clear any blockages. So this, drill just fits down the orifice without too much effort so we're not going to go any further with that one now the same treatment with all the jets that won't go let's try a smaller one that goes that won't go either let's try a smaller one that goes nicely Okay, that one's clean. Once you've cleaned them manually. Wow, that was nice. Exciting. That jet's clean, so keep it somewhere clean. Here's the main jet, that's an important one. Clean out the main jet. And follow it through. This is the emulsion tube, it sits beneath the main jet. And bear in mind, it always has tiny little holes on the sides. This is to help mix the fuel with air and atomize the fuel so that it burns very efficiently. Give those a good clean. Next, chase it out with car cleaner. And then air. You need to manually clean out the float bowl and usually the float and the uh, emulsion tube turret because a lot of time if you've got a dirty carburetor then you've got quite a lot of muck and uh, stale fuel in there so clean it all out manually same with the float then carb clean 
And the final thing to test with this engine is the accelerator pump. This dumps a little bit of fuel down when you accelerate quickly. That's working nicely. Okay, I've got nothing left in there, so let's start rebuilding. Idle mixture screw. I'm gonna set this at one and a half turns from lightly seated. That's usually about right. So screw it all the way in. Note, lightly seated. So you're just gonna screw it in until you just feel the bottom, which is there. And I'm coming out one and a half turns. Half, one, half. Next, the top gallery cover. Next, the float and needle valve. Make sure the float sits nicely. Operates freely. And then, if it's a settable one, you can set the float height. Normally, it wants to be perfectly parallel to the carb body, as this one is. Next thing goes the emulsion tube. Make sure you get it the right way up. Generally speaking, the long bit goes in first because it's got to stick up through there. After that, main jet. Remembering a good fitting screwdriver. After that, the idle jet. The threads on the idle jet are very small, so be very, very careful you don't strip them. And finally, new O-ring on the float bowl. Offer it up. Make sure the O-ring is nicely seated all the way around and not pinched out in any way. So that's it, the carb's rebuilt, all looking good. Everything's tight, and I'm just gonna have a look around my workstation, make sure I've not left anything out. No, I have not. Okay, let's put it back on. So we've got new carb gaskets, and we've got the carb spacer fitted. Make sure you don't forget that. That's perfect. Okay, let's give it a test. One, check for no leaks. Number three, let her warm up for 30 seconds. Number four, make just the mixture screw. Out a quarter of a turn. She likes that. Out another quarter of a turn. She likes that. Another quarter of a turn, no change. We've got back one quarter. Next is just the tick over speed. That sounds nice. Now give her a test. also start first pull from one. 